In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the firmware you need to put onto your 3D printer when installing Clipper. You need this firmware to turn the control board on your 3D printer into a kind of slave board that will carry out the instructions from your Clipper device. This series is sponsored by PCBWay. This video is part five in my Clipper setup series, and I'm going to assume at this point that you have a Clipper device and a configuration file for your 3D printer. If you're not at that stage, then go back and watch the previous videos in this series first. The good news is that rather than having to search online or relying on someone else for this firmware file, your Clipper device creates it for you with just a little bit of information that we should already have. What we need is a .bin file, and this is where we go back to Kaya to create that for us. So with PuTTY or whatever you used before, SSH back in to your Raspberry Pi. If you don't know how to SSH into your Clipper device or how to log in and use Kaya, then go back and specifically watch video two from this series. That's where I show you how to do this. Now, once you're back in, you just need to, again, add that script to open Kaya. Now, when you're back in this menu, click on advanced, which is number four, and then we want to build only, which is number two. Kaya will then open the Clipper firmware configuration page. Now, in order to create the correct firmware for your control board, you need a little bit of information. And that information should be at the top of that printer.cfg file. If you don't know what your printer.cfg file is, then go back and watch the last video in the series, which is all about sourcing and using this file. So back in main cell, click on that printer configuration file to open it. Now I'm setting everything up using my Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro and at the top of its configuration file we have a couple of lines of information. You can see at the top here I have a bit of information which says to use this config during the make config select the STM32F103 with a 28 KIB bootloader and serial on USART1 PA10 slash PA9. Now I don't really know what any of that information means. I don't have to. I just enter it into the Clipper configuration screen. So, STM32F103. We're not going to enable low level configuration options, but we will select STM boards and then the processor. One's already selected, but STM32F103. Yours will very likely be different unless you're setting up the same 3D printer. Bootloader offset was 28K, I believe. Yeah. So 28KIB. And then communication, communication interface USB on PA. 10 and PA9. Just double check. PA10, PA9. Okay. And now this has everything it needs to create your firmware file. Now we can just leave this menu by hitting escape or quit, and then your firmware file will be built by the Raspberry Pi. While that firmware is being built, I just want to quickly tell you about a service that PCBWay offer that you might need one day. 3D printers are great for prototyping and low volume manufacturing, but what do you do if you suddenly find yourself with a project that's taking off and you need larger quantities than your 3D printer can handle? Well, you could invest in more 3D printers and do all of the work yourself, or alternatively, you could try someone like PCBWay for an injection molding quote instead. PCBWay have engineers waiting for your CAD files, and it takes no time at all to get injection molding quotes on quantities as low as a thousand items. So when you need to level up your production, try PCBWay for a quote. Now let's see how that firmware compiling is going. Once it says firmware built, you can close the SSH window. So our firmware is built, but where is it and how do we get it? This firmware file is now held within the file structure on the Raspberry Pi. And to get access to that, we need something called an SFTP client. What is that? I don't know. I just know it works. The one that I use is WinSCP. I would advise you using the same one unless you know a lot more than me, in which case, do that.
With WinSCP open, you have a similar login screen as you had with PuTTY. So enter your host name if that worked or your IP address if it didn't. Now, before clicking login, you need to also enter your username, which for me was Pi and password of Raspberry. So what we now have is a window with two sides. On the left is your PC and on the right is the file structure from the Raspberry Pi. Now to find our firmware file, we need to look in the clipper folder and then in out. And in here, you'll see a clipper.bin file. Either drag that file to the desktop like I do, or you can download it and save it somewhere else on your PC. Just make sure you know where you put it. You can now close WinSCP, we're done with it. You've now successfully created firmware for your 3D printer. The way that you then flash this firmware to your 3D printer will depend on which 3D printer you own. Click up here for some examples of how to do this with different 3D printers and control boards. Or if you already know how to flash firmware to your 3D printer, then click down here to go to the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.